approach the election, there's quite a bit of discussion about what we need to do to get the country back on track. Interestingly, I also hear a fair amount of conversation indicating that many out there don't think we can, that it's just too far gone, that the nation's too wicked, too compromised, too defiled, that the enemy has too many strongholds in too many high places and spheres of influence. There's concern that we may never have another legitimate election in the United States of America, or even if we did, that it wouldn't possibly be enough to fix all the problems that we have. Problems with the government, problems with the media, problems with the education system, problems with the economy, problems with the Federal Reserve, problems inside of the church, and on and on and on and on. There are some people out there that truly feel the nation is too far gone and it's too defiled for there to be any real solution. What do you think? I want to tackle this question. I want to dig into this question because I do think there's a divine solution and we're going to open your eyes to it. But I think this is a fair concern of many out there. So let's talk about it. Just how defiled is the United States of America? But before we dig into that, I'm going to ask you to like, share, subscribe to the video, like always. Uh, share the video with people out there because there's some people wrestling with this issue in their heart. And this video is going to help give them answers and really help encourage them that they can be part of the solution. And there is a solution. Also, if you would subscribe to the channel, that way you're notified every time we upload new content, whether it's one of our Supernatural Mentoring Series episodes, one of our Miracle Healing Prayer videos, one of our prophetic videos, or any of the revelatory content we have to share for you for free. So hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we upload something to equip, encourage, and empower you in your faith. All right, let's jump in and talk about, is the USA too far gone? Is the USA just too defiled? Well, biblically speaking, there are four things that defile the land. Now, obviously, sin defiles the land. Sin defiles us. And whenever we give place to sin, we give place to darkness and we give place to, uh, uh, we, we allow darkness to build strongholds. But biblically speaking, absolutely, unrighteousness brings, uh, when we choose unrighteousness, it releases unrighteousness into the land. But biblically speaking, there are four specific things that will defile the land, defile a nation, defile a people group, as it were, or defile a region. And they are the shedding of blood, especially the shedding of innocent blood, broken covenant, idolatry, and immor immorality, perversion, or sexual immorality specifically. So um, all four of those are and have been rampant in the USA. Let's just look at this. The shedding of blood. Praise God, Roe v. Wade got overturned. But you want to talk about shedding of blood? More than 60 million babies were slaughtered, were sacrificed in the womb. We had legalized child sacrifice in this nation for the better part of 50 years. So much innocent blood, not to mention all with all the violence in so many of our cities and people being killed, um, in, innocent people, drive-by shootings, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of innocent blood that has been and is being shed in the United States of America. Broken covenant, oh my goodness, just the the marriage covenant alone it's it's i think i think someone told me recently that the the divorce rate is just as or even higher inside the church than outside the church now and that in the nation the divorce rate is now higher, higher than 50% and I don't have those numbers in front of me. I may be off a bit, but I think in the ballpark, we can we're, we can safely say that the divorce rate in the USA is roughly 50%, that, it, that roughly one out of two marriages end in divorce. And even if not all of those marriages were um, uh, intentional covenants, where they were done in a church as a covenant under the Lord, a significant, a significant number of marriages. Then you look at look at um, uh, contracts being broken left, right, and sideways. And I realize there's a difference between a contract and a covenant. But this nation does not have an understanding of the the importance and the weight and the the significance of covenantal agreements. So again, just based on the divorce rate alone and the covenant of marriage, we have been we have been breaking one covenant after another in the United States of America. In, in most of my life, I've been, I mean, I, I know my generation wasn't the first generation to grow up in broken homes. I know that was prevalent before, but I think it was, became somewhat unfortunately normalized in 
my generation. I mean, as a kid growing up mostly in the 70s and 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 graduating from high school in 82, 1982, I mean, I'm trying to think if I had any friends, one friend that I can think of had parents who were still married out of all my friends in high school. That's pretty shocking. And that was my goodness, what, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, 40, 40 years, oh my gosh, 40 years ago, I graduated from high school. So um, we have been breaking covenants like crazy in the United States of America. Idolatry, my gosh, we don't have time to unpack this, both the literal idolatry of like um, uh, uh, Baal idols and Astra idols, being set up in different cities at different times, but even just the idolatry of money, of fame, of, of so many different things that we've made an idol out of, an idol out of success, an idol out of this, an idol out of that. Anything that takes place of God as being first and foremost in our lives or in the focus of our nation, that is an idol. And we have idolatry through and through this nation. And then immor immorality, perversion, sexual immorality, oh my goodness. That is everywhere. I mean, my, my gosh, you can't watch a TV show without having it put on display. You can't watch an ad during TV shows, it seems, without it being put on display. I mean, the effort to normalize sexual immorality, adultery. I remember years ago, my gosh, this is back when I was in the advertising industry. So we're going back when I worked in the creative side of big budget advertising, it was mostly in the nineties. Right. Um, um, and in, in the nineties, I don't remember what year, but I remember a billboard that came out and it won all these creative awards and it was celebrated, but it was also shocking because what it said was life is short, have an affair. I don't even remember what that the billboard was an ad for, but it was celebrated as this great creative execution. Think about that. The message going out 30 some years ago was, hey, life is short, do whatever you want. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? All these messages, and those just are advertising messages, let alone what we see in television, what alone we see in, I remember years ago, when my one niece, Rachel, was, uh, I think, 12 or 13, we used to do this thing where we do old movie night and she'd pick an old movie or I'd pick an old movie and we'd watch these old movies. And because she really even when she was little, she loved old movies. And I remember showing her Casablanca and saying to her, hey, you know, this is one of the most celebrated movies. Um, you're going to really love this. And at the end of it, I looked at her and said, what would you think? She said, I didn't like it. I said, why? I said, because. Those two aren't married. And the movie wanted me to root for them, Rick and what was her name? Ilsa. Because, you know, Ilsa's married to, I can't remember who, Laszlo or somebody. But the, the, the whole movie is trying to get us to root for Rick and Ilsa. I think her name was Ilsa, played by Ingrid Bergman, to come together. And when Rachel said that to me, it completely changed. I haven't watched the movie since. That's why I'm not sure I'm remembering all the characters' names right, because it's been so long since I've seen it. Um, but I was so proud of her for pointing it out. And I thought, oh, my gosh. And it made me realize even back then we started normalizing the – idolatry of romance over the covenant of marriage unto uh, uh, immorality in adultery. And, and then, my goodness, the, the, the sexual immorality and perversion that's everywhere, the things they're trying to normalize, and they're trying to normalize these things. For, you name it, right down to uh, pedophilia and uh, 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 bestiality, they want to normalize these things. So we're not, I don't want to go too deep into that. One, because it, it turns my stomach. But the other thing is, I just want to point out that the four things that defile a land, they are running rampant in our nation. We see them in the news. We see them in the media. We see them in our media, in our movies and entertainment. Unfortunately, we see a lot of them in the church. We see it almost everywhere. And not only being, not only all, all these things being committed, but they're often being encouraged, as I, as I said, and even celebrated. The level that legalized child sacrifice, abortion is being celebrated or desired or said, this is your, this is absolutely your right. It's horrible that it's been taken away from you. You have a right to choose. Well, you do have a right to choose. You have a right to choose your actions. And then you have a right to show up in responsibility for those actions. Look, I'm not making light of anybody who's made that hopefully difficult decision. I'm just pointing out that in our country, in every one of these areas, these things are not only being committed, not only being tolerated, they're often being encouraged. They're often being celebrated. And there's a huge effort to make them normalize. So 
if those four things defile the land and they are running rampant in this nation, is the USA too defiled? Has it gone too far? Well, it's absolutely running rampant. The USA is defiled by these four things deeply. There is darkness in the land and deep darkness on the people. But remember what we're told to do in Isaiah 60 is we're told to behold the darkness. We're told to be aware of it. We're not told to look away. We're not told to be discouraged. We're not told to duck and cover. We're not told to give up because it's too dark. We are to behold the darkness in the land and the deep darkness on the people. And then we let the kingdom of God arise in us and the glory of the Lord appear upon us because we're going to be part of the solution. And here's the solution. I'm going to unpack this in detail or in full so you see your role in the solution. But the first thing we have to understand is that the blood of Jesus Christ is enough. Yes, this nation is defiled. Yes, this nation is compromised. Yes, this nation has given place to uh, idolatry, to all those things we talked about. And yes, it's given place to darkness and perversion and unrighteousness again, again, and again. It's even tried to normalize it. But none of that is greater and more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. We must remember that as defiled as the nation is, how defiled is the USA? Very. However, the blood of Jesus Christ works. The blood of Jesus Christ is greater. It's very important for us to remember that even as, as dark and unrighteous and defiled and compromised as things are, remember this. The world was even darker, more compromised, and more defiled when Jesus stepped out of heaven to come and be a solution for us. Why do I say that? Because you think, well, it couldn't have been nearly as bad back then. Well, perhaps things weren't running as rampant, but perhaps they were. I mean, let's get real. There was social issues. There were political issues. All the stuff that's going on today was going on then. However, there was one massive difference back then. Satan actually ruled and reigned in this realm. He had the keys uh, of this realm because we surrendered them in the garden, right? So when Jesus stepped out of heaven to come into this world and completely, utterly, totally settled it and sorted it and solved it, the world was actually darker and more compromised because it was under the rule and reign of Satan. Things are dark and Satan is influencing that darkness and people are agreeing with that darkness, but it is not too dark it is not too defiled and it is not too far gone for Jesus, for the blood of Jesus, for our God who always has a solution. Even if we're in the last days, even if we're in the days as it was in Noah, remember this, God had a plan then and he has a plan now. Like, you know, we, we see a lot of discussion right now about are these the last days? Are these the end times? Is it like what Jesus said, as in the days of Noah? And I've done some videos on that. We've looked at that. You can go back and and look at some of those videos I've done. You'll understand. It'll help you understand. Are we in the end times? Are we in the last days? If so, what do, what do we do? How do we respond? It'll equip, encourage, and empower you to be effective in the last days. But even if we are in the very last, last end time days and Jesus is coming tomorrow, there's we have to understand that that's part of the solution. And you have a role to play in the solution. This is not a time to duck and cover. When God was going to solve things in the days of Noah, he had a solution and he found one willing to be part of that solution, Noah. He had a plan then, he always has a plan and he has a plan now and you are a huge part of it. We talk about um, uh, this a lot here at Robert Hodgkin Ministries, but God has a plan and you are a part of it. He's had a plan since Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. He's had a plan since day six. He's had a plan to have a people willing to be in relationship with him who will operate in his power, by his authority, through his Holy Spirit, all to his glory as his dominion stewards. He has handpicked you to be here now, and he wants you to know while things are dark and defiled, they are not too dark, they are not too defiled, and they are not too far gone for him to not solve it. He has a solution, and you have a part to play. We are the dominion stewards of this realm. That's been his plan since day six. His plan for right now since day six has been you and has been me and has been his remnant, has been his bride, has been his church, has been those willing to walk in relationship with him, which you absolutely are one. You wouldn't be watching this channel. Willing to walk in relationship with him, to be equipped, empowered, and encouraged by him, to partner with him, to be part of his solution. That comes. That 
that being a dominion steward, operating in that power and authority, it comes with three things, blessing, responsibility, and opportunity. I want to unpack those so that you see clearly how you can lay hold of them and how you can walk in this. The first is operating as a dominion steward comes as an incredible blessing because the only way we can be a dominion steward is there's one way to the Father, it's through Jesus Christ. We are saved, right? We are born again, right? We are once again restored to relationship with our heavenly Father and all of his kingdom here on earth. And absolutely, we've been given eternal life in Christ. So we will step from this realm into the eternal realm and heaven and the glory of heaven and the fullness of heaven will be our portion for all eternity. Until God's timing for us to move on to that, we are here as part of his solution, as his dominion stewards, and that comes with great blessing. The blessing is we get to be in a very real relationship with him. We get to hear him. We get to walk with him. We get to learn from him. We get to be loved by him. We get to love him. We get a very, very real relationship with our God, with our Father, with our with the creator of the universe, through the Son, and through his Holy Spirit, which that's another one of the blessings. We get to be filled with his Holy Spirit. One of the reasons Jesus shed his blood for us was absolutely the forgiveness of our sins and absolutely to give us eternal life so we go to heaven one day. But he also shed his blood so we'd be consecrated, set apart, and made holy by the blood of the Lamb. One, so we can be restored to relationship with our Father because the holy cannot uh, uh, relate with the unholy, cannot be in union with the unholy. But the other reason we're sanctified and set apart and made holy is so that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell within us so that we can actually receive the Holy Spirit and become the temple of the living God. So we get the blessing of real relationship with our God. We get the blessing of being filled with his Holy Spirit. And that means being filled with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, everything pertaining to life and godliness, all the fruit, all the gifts, all the power, all the presence, all the personality of God is given to us through the Holy Spirit. Plus, we get to be connected with him. Another blessing is that is we're connected with him deep unto deep. We can know his thoughts. We can know his heart. We can hear him. We can receive from him. We can manifest him. Oh, my goodness, we become his temples. And it's not just a building that he shows up in on Sunday. It's a 24-7 depth of reality of relationship and everything that comes with him, that with it. That is great, great blessing that we get to enjoy as a dominion steward. But there's more than blessing. There's also responsibility. We need to understand that everything that's going on in the world right now, everything that's happening in our nation right now, it's happening on our watch, not God's. I want that to sink in. I want that to challenge you for a minute. Because sometimes when I say that, people are like, hey, wait a minute. It's happened on our watch, not God's. Are you saying God's not there? God doesn't care. God's not involved. No, not at all. I am saying what I've already said. I'm saying it in a different way. But we have to understand since day six, God's plan has been to have us as his dominion stewards here on earth. He's there. He cares. He equips. He empowers. He encourages. He leads. He guides. He guards. He directs. He protects. He empowers. He flows in. He flows through. However, we have a role to play and we need to understand that we have a role to play. And when we look at what's going on in our nation, there's part of um, what I want to lovingly say is it's time for us as the dominion stewards, as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, as the ecclesia, as the church, as the remnant. It's time for us to grow up, take care of um, what God's blessed us with in this realm and sort of pick up our room and look after our toys, as it were. It's time to grow up a little bit and understand the role we have to play. We're, we, 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 we are not called to be God, but we are called to be the body of Christ. We're called to co-labor with God. We're called to be like Moses. And when God says, okay, you, you extend your hand, you do it. We, we need to remember Jesus told us, you'll do the works that I do when you are the body of Christ in the earth. I'm going to be with the Father. So you're going to be the body of Christ and you will do the works that I do. So This is something else that's really important, especially when we see the size of everything that's going on and all the challenges and all the spheres and all the realms. And we can look at um, the, the remnant and think it's not enough. There's not enough. Here's what I want you to get really encouraged by. It always starts with one. 
and you can be that one. It always starts with one who is willing, one who is willing to listen, one who is willing to obey, one who is willing to be in relationship, one who is willing to give place to him, his will, his way, one who is willing to believe, one who is willing to receive, one who is willing to step out in him, with him, and for him. It always begins with one. It was one it just took one, Adam, walking with God in relationship and co-laboring and within the earth. We see a picture that, that for a while there only was one. So we know all it takes is one. And Adam chose to enjoy that relationship. We don't exactly know for how long, but for quite some time, he was willing to walk with God in the cool of the, the garden every evening, right? In the cool of the evening, in the garden every evening. And he was his dominion steward on earth. Joseph was one who was willing to stay true to the dream, stay true to the vision, stay true to the word of God and trust and walk with God no matter what. From the pit to the prison, all the way to the palace, Joseph was willing to maintain, and he didn't do it perfectly. It's another thing that we can be encouraged by. We don't have to do it perfectly. We just have to be willing, and we have to be willing to be that one. Moses was one at the Red Sea when all of Israel is murmuring and complaining and saying, why'd you bring us out here to die? We were better off in bondage. Moses was one willing to say, God will fight for us. And God said, I will, but you have a role to play. Stretch forth your staff. Remember what I've spoken to you. Remember uh, who I told you I was, who you were, and how I'm going to work with you to set my people free. Now stretch forth your staff and speak to the situation. Elijah was one at Mount Carmel right? One, one willing to stand up, one willing to cry out, one willing to seek God on behalf of a nation shifted everything. You want to talk about a nation that was defiled. Ahab and Jezebel had completely led Israel away from God. Israel's hearts had gotten hard. Their necks had gotten stiff towards God. They, they had given place to occultic worship. One was willing to be part of God's solution in a defiled land, in a compromised land, in a dark and unrighteous land. And God showed up because of one. God always has a solution and it always begins with one. And you can be that one. Daniel was one. And you know, what I love about Daniel is in Daniel 1.8, how it says Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself. That's Daniel 1.8. Now we know that's in the context of the food, the diet that they were being served. But think about this. The world's trying to serve us a diet right now that'll defile us. The world's trying to feed us a diet of negativity, of fear, of unrighteousness, of normalized uh, perversion, of normalized idolatry, of normalized broken covenant, of normalized shedding of the blood. And if we're willing to not be defiled, to take that in and take that on and give place to those mindsets, Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself. And he was one God used powerfully. God, just like God used Joseph to, to bring the nation of Israel um, uh, uh, to, to, to survive, that they would have been killed off in the famine if it wasn't for him. He used Daniel to put the reality of his kingdom on display. So Nebuchadnezzar has a revelation of the one true God and declares it to all his world. It just takes one. New Testament, Mary was one, willing to be overshadowed, willing to be a birther, willing to believe for the impossible, willing to receive for the impossible, willing to ponder the impossible until it was so. It only takes one. You can be that one. So that's the blessing. That's the responsibility. What's the opportunity? So there's absolutely an opportunity in where we are right now. And God's very clear on how we can respond, even when things look as dark, defiled, and as far gone as they do right now in the USA or whatever nation you're watching from, because my goodness, the whole, basically the whole wide world is in this basket. Um, uh, the, here's our first opportunity, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Now stick with me. This is a scripture we know so well that I think we're forgetting how profound the opportunity, the presentation of opportunity is here. Plus, there's something here that doesn't get talked about a lot that I want to point out to you that's really going to encourage you that God can do a great work 
work in this nation and he can do it through you. Okay, Second Chronicles 7, 14. God is declaring through the prophet, if my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We know it well, but we need to understand this is our roadmap for where we are right now as a nation and a world. This is our instruction manual for how to grab hold of an opportunity to see everything shift, everything change. And we need to understand the kingdom is always simple. It's always simple. It's not always easy, but it's always simple. So do not dismiss the opportunity because you're too familiar or it seems too simple. Um, God makes it very, very clear. So anybody, even me can grab hold of it. And it's this, if my people He's talking to us. He's talking to the remnant. He's talking to the dominion stewards. He's talking to, to, is there one who's willing to do this? If we who are called by his name, so he's talking to us, we're the solution. Isn't this encouraging? And he's not saying if the, if the compromised leaders will change their ways, if the compromised heads of business, heads of media, heads of the education system who are in league with darkness, doing wicked things and trying to normalize everything that defiles the land darker and darker, if they will turn from their wicked ways, if they will humble themselves. No, he's saying it's not up to your least favorite politician or least favorite lying media head or least favorite university president who's trying to brainwash generations under unrighteousness. We don't need them. We need God. We need the blood of Jesus, and he only needs one. And imagine if he gets a whole company, because that's what he's getting. If Imagine if every single person watching this video said, oh, I really do see it, and it's simple. And if I gave up on it, I repent. I'm doubling down by the grace of Holy Spirit. If we, who are called by his name, will humble ourselves, pray, and seek his face, and we turn from our wicked ways. And what are some of those wicked ways? Well, if there's sin in your life, stop. Stop. It's harming you. It's harming others in your life. And it's releasing darkness into the land and it's defiling the land. However, there could be things that aren't obvious in overt sin. Like what if, what if part of the darkness we need to turn from, the wickedness we need to turn from is because when we've beheld the darkness in the earth and the deep darkness on the people, as opposed to letting the kingdom of God arise in us so the glory of the Lord appears upon us, what if what we've done is we've allowed the kingdom of our flesh, the rule of our flesh, the frustration, the irritation, the fear, the doubt, the, 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 uh, 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 what's the word I want? The like battle fatigue, like just, I've had enough. There's a word for that. I'm not thinking of what it is. Um, but if we've given place to that, then we're actually, if we're murmuring and complaining instead of speaking life and blessing, as opposed to humbling ourselves and praying, we can turn from those things, fear, doubt. And, and even if it's like, God, it's just too big. It's just too far gone. Oh my goodness. You know, even in Nineveh, they heard it once and they repented and, and our nation, we've heard it again and again and again and again and again. And the, and most of the leaders and most of the nation aren't repenting. Well, what if instead of giving place to doubt and frustration because of that, uh, we, we just say, God, thank you that it's not up to them. You just, you always start with one. Let it start with me today. I'm going to double down. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I, me, your son, who is called by your name, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to, I'm not going to lean out on my own understanding, but I'm going to trust that you have a solution that it's not too dark. It's not too defiled. It's not too far gone. You are greater than all of it. The blood of your son is more than enough. And I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to come under that truth. I'm going to bow down to that truth and I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray and I'm going to seek you. And I'm going to turn from any wickedness that you are showing me, any unrighteousness that you are showing me. And, and you are going to hear from heaven and you are going to forgive the sin in this and you are going to heal the land. Your blood is more than enough. Okay, here's another opportunity. Romans 5, 15 through 19. I won't for time's sake because we've already gone on for quite a ways here. Um, um, and I want to I keep this focused and short. Um, 
But in Romans 5, 15 through 19, let me paraphrase. It basically says, because the first son, Adam, chose to disobey and righteousness entered the earth. And we need to get our head around this. It doesn't say because Adam disobeyed, he was made unrighteous. He was. But it points out that when we, those who are the dominion stewards, those who are in relationship with our God, when we choose unrighteousness, it actually not only defiles us, but it releases defilement into all creation. It says unrighteousness entered the land because the son of God, Adam, chose to disobey. When we choose to disobey, it releases unrighteousness. That's a heavy thing to get our head around. Way before there's powers and principalities of darkness and powered in regions and, and have taken hold of places, we've given place to those powers and principalities. We've given place by choosing to disobey, choosing to sin. But if we who are called by his name, if we who are his children, his remnant, his dominion steward, who are called by his name, if we will humble ourselves, if we will pray, if we will seek his face and will turn from those wicked ways, he will come and he heal the land. Because look at this. We can also choose righteousness because, and that will then inform the land. How do we know? Because that's the second part of what he communicates in Romans 5, 15 through 19. After the heavy of, well, because Adam disobeyed unrighteousness out of the whole earth. Earth. But then he said, because the second son, Christ Jesus, or second Adam, Christ Jesus, chose to obey, righteousness was made available to all. Catch that. It doesn't say because he chose to obey, he was made righteous. He already was righteous. He was perfect. He was the spotless lamb. But because in the earth he chose to obey, righteousness was made available to all. Righteousness was released out to all creation. Righteousness went forth to cover the land. Here's the opportunity as a dominion steward. We simply choose not to sin. And that and we simply choose to be heroes of holiness, radicals of righteousness, and that is released out. And a little bit of light shatters lots and lots of darkness. Look at Genesis 1 3. God didn't have to say, Let there be light and 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 light. And there's some light over there and more light over there. And oh my gosh, there's so much darkness, more light, more light, more light. No, he said, Let there be light. Boom. There was light and all the darkness dispersed. Do you understand? You can be the one who shifts everything because you choose to walk in radical righteousness, heroic holiness, not legalism, not religion, not self-righteousness, but because we choose to walk in who we truly are in Christ and who he really is in us, we release that out into all creation. One more opportunity is the dominion steward. There's lots more, but I'll give you one more powerful one to really encourage you that you are God's solution. You are the way he's going to turn things around. This is Jesus himself when he gives us the great commission in Matthew 28. This is the victorious risen Lord who's won all, done all, and given all. And he's, he's coaching us up. He's given us the great commission and he's reminding us who he is. He's reminding us who we are and he's reminding what we can do in him, with him and for him. And he says this, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Catch that all, not most, all authority. He has all, the enemy has power, but he has no authority. If we'll grab hold of the authority that Jesus has, and you're going to see has been given to us to the glory of his name, and we walk in it, then we actually can take authority over the power of the enemy. That's what Luke 10, 9, I think it is, or 10, 19, where he's given us power. He's given us authority over all the power of the enemy. I'm not denying the enemy has power, but I want you to understand you have authority over that power. So Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, because it's been given to me and I'm giving it to you as my dominion steward, as my body on the earth through my Holy Spirit. You go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I love this. You may have heard me share on this before, but quickly, let me unpack the power of this. So he's saying, go and baptize nations. Is the USA too far gone? Not for the blood of Jesus, not for the authority of Jesus, not for a, uh, a growed up, woke up, uh, 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 mature body of Christ on earth like you, the ecclesia like you, when you realize who you are and what you have and what you can do. He's saying, go out and baptize nation or make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That word there in the Greek is onoma. And I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but one of the ways it can be translated is character and nature. 
It's because I asked the Lord once years ago, why do you say name of, and then say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I know you're one God, but those are like three aspects or persons or names of the one God. And I don't pretend to understand the Godhead, but this just struck me. And that's when he said, well, look it up. And I went into Strong's Concordance and looked up that word name, it's onima, and it struck me that it can be translated character in nature. So how do we baptize a nation? How do we soak a nation, immerse a nation, uh, marinate a nation under transformation like uh, a cucumber being baptized and brine becomes a pickle? We do it by choosing to walk in the character and nature of the Father, Son, and Spirit. And if you're wrestling with that interpretation, look at what he goes on to say to really clarify it. Baptize in the name, the character and nature of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. So he's saying, how do you baptize a nation? How do you soak and saturate it in, in righteousness, in holiness, in transformation by choosing to walk in my character and nature? By not only uh, 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 healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, uh, cleansing the lepers, but also walking in holiness, walking in righteousness. Do you see the opportunity? When we choose to walk in the character and nature of God, we can shift an entire nation. And if you're thinking, well, there's been a remnant for a while and the USA is just getting darker, that can shift in a moment. Don't, don't let the devil lie to you and say, you're not enough or you don't matter. You might be the thing that tips the bowl when you grab hold of this and see it. Teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Catch that. So he's saying to you, I'm with you right here, right now, even to the end of the age. We're not at the end of the age yet. So he's with us. He's with you. And he has given you the blessing, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the responsibility, and the opportunity as his dominion steward to shift everything. Is the USA too far gone? Is the USA too defiled? No. Is it far gone? Is it defiled? Yes, but it's not too far gone. It's not too defiled. The blood of Jesus works and our God wants to work through you. I've got one other thing to encourage you and give you an opportunity. We've got eight decrees to heal the land. These are eight scriptural decrees. They have, that they have nothing to do really with the election or with any of the candidates in the election. It's everything to do about declaring God's word from that authority, from that dominion steward authority, making these scriptural decrees over your nation. Because God says, when we humble ourselves, we pray. When we seek his face and we grab hold of his word, and we declare that word that he will hear from heaven, he will come and he heal the land. This is the way to invite Jesus into our land as, as King Jesus to rule and reign. This is the way that we can, one of the ways, a simple, simple way. And if you want these eight decrees to heal the land, you can you can pray through them in about a minute or a minute and a half, or you can do what I often do, which is some mornings I pray through them um, like that. And then other mornings I linger with Holy Spirit and he unpacks them and it brings me into this incredible time of intercession for the nation. But anytime you declare the word it's powerful because the word of god never returns void but accomplishes all that it's sent to do if you want these eight decrees to heal the nation simply email me robert at roberthodgkin.com and ask me for the eight decrees i will send you a pdf of this and you'll have them you can print them out you can put them in your bible you can do whatever you want but you can make those de eight decrees every day and start operating as a dominion steward two other quick things before i let you go i want to make sure you know that this evening, this is coming to you uh, Friday. What's, what is today's date? This, uh, September 27th, Friday, September 27th. This evening, Patricia King and I are doing a free webinar where um, she'll be sharing her prophetic words for 5785. We're just about to come into Rosh Hashanah, the year 5785 on the Jewish calendar, and she's got some powerful prophetic words that will also help focus you and equip you for the opportunity of operating as a dominion steward and making a difference in this nation and the world right now. The other thing I want you to know is Sunday evening, September 29th, I'm doing our very first Supernatural Mentoring Series Masterclass on the Divine Science of Engineering Heaven into the Earth. Now, both of these are free. 
They're completely free. This webinar is going to teach you how to operate as a gate of heaven into the earth. I'll be sharing with you what Holy Spirit's been sharing with me for the last four or five years. And again, as, as he always does with me, making it simple but powerful so that you can see biblically what you have and how to operate in it so you become a gate of heaven into the earth and you understand how to manifest heaven into the earth through, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and through the tools he's given you. We'll make it simple and we'll make it practical. You don't want to miss it. So you can register for both those at patriciakingministries.com. Go to the events link. Or I've got um, for the uh, 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 both of them, the graphic that I put up, you can go back to the graphic and there's a QR code in the graphic. For the Divine Science, I have this QR code. This will also take you right to the registration page. But maybe the easiest thing for you to do is either scan this QR code or go to patriciakingministries.com, click on the event link. And then for uh, uh, Prophetic Words for 5785 Part 2 with Patricia or um, the Divine science of engineering heaven into the earth you can register for those for free and then we'll see you friday evening and sunday evening god bless you remember it's yes it's dark out there but it's not too dark it's not too defiled and it's not too far gone god has a plan and you are a huge part of it ready for more go to roberthodgkin.com for more teachings more resources and more information about robert hodgkin ministries and men on the front lines